Hello everybody and welcome to week two of the Spring Series. My name is Night Geo and I have a really special guest with me casting alongside me. We haven't done this since Open Division, but you wish. How are you, my friend? I it's weird being back in front of a behind a microphone in front of a camera, but I'm excited to be back. Yeah, we're the Masters of Open Division. We're back to cast some hots for you this week. I should be good. I'm excited. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while, like you said, since Open Division. But now we've got ourselves a spring season. It's kind of like an it's an off season competitive scene where a bunch of teams. If you're not even in a team, you can make a team. Just join in, have fun, get to compete with each other. We had a few big names last week, especially multiple units. They were on a tear. They took down. Um, well, honestly, we left school for this. They didn't really have that much of a strong performance against multiple units. That was a, a team that we saw tear up open division against a team of makeshift pros, in a sense, that featured a lot of high-profile names. Yeah, I mean, it just shows the level of competition you get, the difference maybe between the Premier and, and some of the open teams that we've seen. You know, we've seen uh, a few months ago, uh, months or so ago, we had that little invitational where it was the some of the open teams, some of the Premier teams, and that was some really good matches. But when you mix up and get some of these heroes in, the players from these higher teams coming in and... You know, everyone's having a bit of fun, but they're taking it seriously. And, you know, they perform all to be performed really, really well. Yeah, absolutely. Now, because it is the off-season, we don't really have that kind of dilemma where it's, oh, hey, new hero release comes out. We're going to take her off for two weeks and whatnot, just like we have in Open and Premiere. So, with that being said, the new hero, Orphea, I think I pronounced that right. Don't quote me on this. But she is playable, and honestly, she... In Hero League, where I've been playing, she's almost 99% of the time banned. And if she's not banned, she's picked. Do you have any experience with that? Or are we going to see something similar like that maybe in tonight's games? I mean, I think coming out of BlizzCon, everyone was scared to death of her. You know, everyone... Like everyone says with every new hero, she's OP. She does too much damage. She's got all this mobility. It's, you know, power creep. But then, like I said, in Hero, Hero League, she's either banned... Or when, if we, you know, the stats that are available to us, she's got like a 40% win rate in Hero League. So, theoretically, she's not that strong. We don't really know. Like, it's hard to know. If, like, maybe everyone stops doing the scare ban and guess she gets more games. Maybe that'll even out. I think it's a chance we'll probably see a lot of bans um, for it tonight. Uh, some teams might have some strategies. We might see that through. Um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. If any map that I would love to see her on, I don't know if they fixed it. We were talking about this behind the scenes, and I just want to mention it again. But Orphea on Volskaya Foundry. Now, I don't know if anyone in the community has seen it. I've seen it. You've mentioned talking about it. But on Reddit, there was a guy who posted a Twitch clip, and it was Orphea able to, one, I think, 100 to 0 the protector on Volskaya Foundry and also deny any person clicking it. I don't know if that's been fixed, but if that does happen, we get a map like that. I would like to see Orphea being picked. Because of just that sheer reason, you deny an objective, and that map is very objective control. Yeah, I mean, if you can break the game, why, why not break the game? Hopefully, well, I said, we're not sure if we've been... There's been a few bugs lately. Heroes is always full of bugs. It's delightful, and when the community gets a hold of it. Um, so maybe we'll have to wait and see. Maybe we can test it out, see if they've fixed it, and hope for the best. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they did fix that Dragon Shrine bug as well, which was kind of interesting. I tried to re replicate that in my Hero League matches. It didn't work out, unfortunately. But oh, it sucks. Well, hopefully that bug fixes and whatnot. Uh, in terms of tonight, so this is being week two. We had teams come from last week. We had, um, again, multiple units took out last week in a best of three. Uh, they were to take on, I believe it was nobody who unfortunately couldn't make it on the final day and taking the victory then. But in this week, because only six teams have shown up, and we want more teams to join, come on, please, subscribe. Please. Come up with a team. doesn't matter if it's a last-minute thing. Just go and you can have a bunch of fun, get to see yourselves where do you hold off against these high, more well-known names, or even just a bunch of other people, a bunch of friends grouping up together. But with that being said, multiple units and nobody are going to have a buy of the first round, and we're going to be featuring White Girl Wasted taking on Eagle Slayers. Waco Wasted, they were a team that's a premier team too. And that's a, that's still some quality there, you wish. Yeah, I mean, most definitely. I'm, I'm, I can't remember exactly what their roster was by the end of, of last season. I think it changed a little bit um, over the season. So whether it's exactly the same, I'm not actually entirely sure. But, you know, t players that have played 
together now for at least a little while, at least the core of their team, I would imagine. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they can carry over that that synergy where, you know, in a tournament like this where people are just, you know, people just making up teams, um, synergy can be really, really important because a lot of teams may not have that synergy. So, you know, that might give them a bit of an upside, even going against someone like Egos Wasted, who has, you know, a pretty imposing looking roster. With the Stumpy, Trashley, Raven, Luke, Matt, even Fat94. Yeah, coming back from Fat94, coming back from uh, LizCon, Mind Freak had an interesting performance there. I was, I was happy of them. I kept putting everyone in the background, even though everyone's like, oh, it's just Mind Freak on the road. Like, you know, representing OCE in the Inter region. Great. That'll be a good match. Yeah, no, definitely, for sure. It should be. Yeah, we, yep. I'm looking forward to it. I think it'd be a good way to start the night. Getting a chance if you have their first game. You can see these strats, we saw last week, uh, this was, we let's look at this. They pulled out the Zool team, matched up against multiple units, uh, something that people in the book as Korean strat, and maybe a question about how they can do camping there, you know, we can kind of table up the dilemma, but can we see something like that happening in any type of cheese strat? If so, what would be the I mean, it's it's possible. I didn't know Zul was a Korean strat. I know NA ran it quite a lot at the end of last year. Um, but if, I mean, maybe the Koreans might have probably made it work better than NA would have ever made it work. Um, but I mean, it's entirely possible. It's hard to know what cheese, you know, with things like Morganis and Orphea coming in, we haven't seen a lot in the competitive scene. Um, so we really don't know how they're going to work with other stuff. I mean, so you've got Hero League and Team League and things of the sort. Um, but uh, you, you're, there's always like Chogal, things like that. Uh, Zul main tank, Uther main tank, that's another, I mean, that's another NA cheese a little bit. But they didn't really pull off a BlizzCon very well. They tried really hard, but yeah, um, Rip Tempo, they couldn't ever pull it off, I don't think. But anyway. My mind is thinking of someone like Alex Stars or a white mate. Kind of. You know, that little consistent healer to keep up. He's a very first healer. He'll probably need another one to consistent people inside of him. Uh, I can't remember because it was, uh, what are they, Octalysis were the ones that were running at a lot, like uh, end of their season, the Uther. I can't remember what they were running with. May maybe. Tempo may have been running it with a Taronda at BlizzCon. Like I said, they didn't really make that work, unfortunately. Um, but maybe not as practiced as some of the other teams, like Otalis that had been running it for a little bit longer, but then they didn't make it to BlizzCon, so they can't use their strats there if they're not there. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, yeah, I'm not really not sure. I can't, I can't remember. Probably White Mane. With White Mane, we see a lot of, saw a lot of White Mane. A lot of Taronda, though, at BlizzCon. Works well with Murden, uh, works well with almost any really dive or kind of lockdown. You have that chain CC and squeaky chain CC. Last week was essentially just chain CC up to CC up to CC up to CC. You stop. We saw uh, lock up the really interesting I think it was Capital taken off the list and recently ran a composition that was more on, on chain CC taking on Capital's composition of Displacement. And that was a great one. It was a... When they had the chance, Rinse and Bleak got the dump off that as Kerrigan, one of the picks, got instant blow up. But then you first along with Garage, you had uh, Garage, Hural, Junkrat, no work whatsoever, they could not get any of the That was an interesting fight there. Yeah, I mean, Chain TC, it almost comes down to not really close to to a combo combo, um, not, not but it's a little bit different. Um, but but it, it can work really, really well when you pull the combo off, when you can pull your chain CC off, but it takes just a little bit, like you said, you've got a little bit of displacement from the other side or they can kind of read into it or if they can make it, they can, if you can bait some of that CC out, force them to use it a bit early, well, then you kind of, then there goes their strat. Um, but yeah, it's all these sorts of strategies that makes Heroes so interesting. It, 
what makes it so fun to watch. People come up with these crazy things and try and uh, figure out. You know, I, I'd love to see like a, some uh, the Mayors Warden's Cage into I can't remember Orphe. Is it just called not Stomp? What whatever her big alt is. Things like that. They're always fun to watch when you know you can just pile everything on top of each other and, and hopefully come out on the other side. Then you realize someone's died. Like, oh crap, someone's died! What? And then you know that we just start to cut the. I like the idea of uh, A Weaver coming out next. So you got New Hero Mother Weaver and A Weaver. Morgana's just a nice little A Weaver slow. It's really exciting to get the heart pumping for the Yeah, most of what we all tune in for. Going towards in the first map, we were playing again. It was White Girl West taking on Big Girl Mayor. And this map, the first map in the best of three, is going to be a Sky Temple. And it's very, I really like it. I like it. I like the uh, objective kind of battle royale it has. Those top maps are really nice to enjoy. The fight over those temple shrines. I love playing my Dahaka on this map. It's got this global presence and able to kind of get multiple uh, temples to try at the same time. But, Going towards this one, this is the best of three. What do you reckon you wish it had for picks and or bans, really? Oh, first game of the night, you you just love putting me in, in the spotlight. Um, I, well, I mean, Global's, like you said, Dahaka. Fullstead's probably one of his better maps we've seen um, in the like the professional scene. Um, so things like that, like the Global's are, usually get a lot of value. Uh, yeah, your typical, any anything else typical, really, where, you know, you're fighting over these points, you're going to be fighting over that boss control come, you know, post-13, post-16. So anything like your, your Muradins, your Diablos, you know, Diablos falling off maybe a little bit lately. Um, yeah, things like that. Uh, we could, you know, first game of the night, out of who knows how many, we could see anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want. I think, I feel like something like Garrosh might be an easy band with Diablo, given Genji, given... Um, Maybe Morgana, Ophelia, stuff like that. Uh, in terms of, I don't really know what other picks really. But it kind of like does mind boggle your mind really. Well, we love doing this. We did this the entire eight weeks of Open Division. We always tried to predict what they were going to pick or what they were going before we even started. It sometimes it feels futile because we really have no idea what's on on the mind of these teams. So we'll just have to wait and see and be patient and then they'll tell us what they're going to pick well they'll show us what they're going to pick yeah absolutely i think we're getting ready towards the lobby both teams just sort of doing the final readies up i know you're probably enjoying the view that we have i mean you wish you look quite fine and dandy with the back cap on a nice shirt on but i mean we all kind of want to get in towards this match really i'm, I'm keen i love sky temple but it is impenetrable hill oh sorry that's their premier name, Wake of Wasted. A very, again, well around our premier team. And we're going back to another team of makeshift misfits, really. Uh, everyone's an individual high caliber player. Uh, while we're going to the ban phase, are we going to see more targeted, maybe, bans towards team compositions? Or is it just going to be one of those, well, it doesn't matter, just target ban, take out the hero person. It's individual skill over team play. We can take this on, don't worry, we've got this. Uh, it's. I mean, it's possible. You, you could. We could see some tiger bands. I mean, we've got some even on uh, uh, eager slayers. We've, we've. You know, we've got some names that we uh, recognise. You know, Matt and Luke they made a bit of a name for themselves in open division um, with some particular heroes. Uh, so we could see some tiger bands. A uh, health desert band. Uh, that I'll be honest. I can't say I was expecting that. Target ban again. We've got high caliber players. It could work. He, if you're stuck on a shrine, stuck on a temple, you know, he can just form that kind of displacement, deny AOE lockdown for any potential follow up. The chain CC begins. Uh, Avatar banned. He's just a nuisance, constant pressure lane. And there we go. You can see the Ophia banned as well. But now this is interesting. Maev is free. 
Marganus is banned. Genji's free. Garrosh is free. What's going to be Wild Girl Wasted's first pick? I mean, any of those that you suggested, Garrosh, Genji, Maev, I mean, they're all valid first picks. I mean, that's the thing. We're, we're at the point now with heroes. If you're just going to first ban these new scary heroes, it's going to leave these ones, these tried and tested heroes like Genji on, on the board. I mean, and yeah, Genji, that just makes makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's going to be the first pick, Genji. Uh, well, it's kind of a risky thing we got Genji first pick. We talked about this last week, me and Kit, about the fact that he's very strong high level tier, but when it comes down to lower level tier, he is not that great. Uh, he's got like a 40% win, 43% win rate. He's kind of a more of a, a handicap free team. So picking him so early on, you can have counter picks, and there's the Maev being counter picked. I guess in response to the Genji and the Dahaka, yes, I love this already. I'm happy. Yeah, I mean the Dahaka and the Maev. So, you know, such strong first picks, Maev, Genji from either side, just strong picks anywhere. Dahaka, great on this map. Dahaka, you've got me saying it like you. Um, and then in on the other side, uh, Diablo. You know, think how I'm pronouncing everything now i feel rusty um and toronto so like we were saying you know toronto's really uh rocketed up uh recently in the last few months with her popularity and she's just an incredibly strong solo support which if you told me that six months ago i don't think we would have believed you that that was going to happen so oh, absolutely she was considered one of those uh random picks that you're just trolling why you trolling for you pick you try and pick a damage deal pick someone else not a real anything, but yeah, right. She's skyrocketed to at least top number one support. And yes, you wish. Join the Night Geo side. Mispronounce everything. Have an unusual accent. It works for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've already been told recently that now that I've been in New Zealand for a few years, I'm starting to pick up a Kiwi accent, so I might have to move back home. No, no, I'm joking. Oh, I love good. I love Kiwi. I want to. I want to go to New Zealand, but that's in a whole different topic. Uh, Garrosh being banned, Hansa being banned, Cassia and Cassio, Cassio, Deckard Kane as well being picked. That's a strong kind of uh, support with Deckard. He, I like. I, I kind of like it in response to the Genji, but also the fact that he can slow down or deny anyone else that Genji leaves behind when he swift strikes in. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, Deckard's good into the Genji. You know, he, he Swiss strikes in, like you said, he can put down his scroll of ceiling and then all of a sudden the Genji can't go anywhere. You know, you got the Maeve can lock it, lock Genji down. Or then, and then the Katia can blind him and, and wreck. So, you know, they've got the ability to just control that. The Sonya and the Jaina on the other side. I'm interested though. I mean, Jaina, again, you know, strong. We see it quite a lot. The Sonya's not one of my favorite heroes to play, but we don't see her a, a lot lately. Yeah, she's she's uh, she fits an interesting role as a solo laner. Uh, she, she can take it to Dahaka. She can sustain alongside him. And uh, interesting enough, if you were watching or listening to Get Good, before this they were talking about solo laners and i decided well i love solo lane it's my favorite role i want to listen in and they were discussing about the heart guards discussing about sonya how they can both they can apply pressure as well as so deal damage and deal with the minions in an aoe like respective way both simultaneously and that's what makes them so point potent sonya also has her sustain if she decides to go for the base attack heal proto attack to keep up with the haka because eventually he just ends up healing with the souls and he just becomes a nuisance to deal with and that's great for him it works but well then when you have to look at sonya really she isn't in my opinion one of the strongest solo laners though and i feel like she can get well becomes nothing if she doesn't get a good start if she doesn't have the great rotation if she's not able to get into the right positions and when you've got someone like well cassia with the blind maev she loves it when people come in towards her, and it's luke playing maev as well we saw him if this is the same look in open division, how dangerous he is. And you also got Muradin. I, I think this works wonders well for Eagle Slayers, really. Yeah, most definitely. I think, uh, like, uh, Sonya can do the job. She she can, she can, you know, easily clear lane. She can push it out. But when you're going into someone like a Dahaka, who is one of the, you know, high tier solo owners that we've had now for a while, it's going to be really hard. Plus, then you're dealing with the fact that. Dahaka is a global. That's you know makes it a, a whole 
another, you know, that's, that's a whole other thing. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how we go with that matchup. Absolutely. And, well, to kick it off, the first game of week two in this game star spring season, off season, really, we're going to have ourselves a best of three. It is Eagle Slayers taking on Walker Wasted. On the blue side is Eagle Slayers, and that's going to have Stump God on Katia, Try Ashley on Deckard, Raven on Dahaka, Luke on Mayev, and Matt will be playing Verity. Let your battle begin. And on the we've got Spazzo on the Diablo, Spazzo on the a pat on the Jaina, on the Genji, and Olo on the Toronto. And already both teams kind of sizing up each other. I like this, but a great jump in. They're going to get the root off. The multiple things is happening in Prazo is quite deep. Mount low, Stump Gold low. Even Luke has to back away. Here comes Hill. He's looking for the kill, and this is going to force Eagle Slayers to back away. Like your Slayers. Oh, that's a nice pick up first blood for themselves. Hill is going to walk away nice and proud with that first kill of the game. Yeah, that was really uh, just a lovely initiation from Waka Wasted. You know, they pu pushed that, pushed that Genji just played back, uh, and then just was able to swift strike in, get into that back line, nice kill. And, you know, not fast pressure to play down the front line. That's what we want to see Diablo. We want to just push them around, fools, push them into those fools, get those done. And I think it works well with got Spazzo, with Diablo. You want it, you see him kind of positioning a bit more aggressively. He wants to kind of get in those dives, whatnot. And when you're looking alongside his teammates, you have Hill, Genji. You've also got Krazo on that Sonya. And these two further melee warriors, melee players jumping in alongside him. You've got the cavalry there, and that's something nice. I don't really get to see that much when I'm stuck as solo warrior and I'm diving in, and everyone's just like, what the heck are you doing? Getting the bad initiations. Bad initiations. That's that's just the meaning. That that's just bringing that open division type flavor to to the spring series. I like it. Oh, of course, absolutely. We're already seeing now both teams to secure the early giant camp for push a, apply pressure. It's I guess seeing high caliber team players might see a bit more macro play, maybe a bit more. I guess more. Uh, the, word, the word escapes me, but it's. I guess highly intellectual or more calculated plays, really, and applying more pressure. But Hill, we're gonna get a jump on towards Luke, but here comes the rest of Eagle Slayers. They try to get him. Matt following up through, can't get the stun. There's the root, he's so low. Yes, he will, and that's gonna be Stump God picking up the kill there. That's gonna be a one in return. In fact, they pick up Sonya. Good on the Harker taking that one for himself. Ah, uh, yeah, I was so excited about the NG kill, didn't. Completely, I missed that. That's a hard passage. That kill. Yeah, don't underestimate the Haka. He can be quite nuisance, quite painful. And well, he's gone decided to go for one who collects, so that just allows him to regain more and more essence as long as he's killing his creep. So he's going to be have a great sustained day for himself up in that top lane. Now we've got the temple spawning up there, you wish. And already seeing both teams kind of lingering around the right area. The Haka rotating towards the middle lane. He will have his brush still ready to just jump in wherever needs needs to. But both teams focusing in towards that middle shrine. Eagle Slayer's got the better positional advantage. Get the stun on towards the Spazzo. Let's be careful. Hill also down to half health. But they found themselves a little sneaky backline of YOLO. Has to be careful. He gets dropped. Stomp will be picking that up. Now Prozo is stuck in a world of hurt. Gets pulled by Luke. That's going to be two members down. Or wipe your wasted as Eagle Slayers are looking to secure even more kills. Spazzo needs to be very careful. But is not able to pick up any other members of that. And that's going to be two for nothing in the favor of Eagle Slayers as they go back towards the temple. That's a fantastic team fight. Using, you know, using that displacement by looking at the back with the drag, they managed to pick off, you know, picking off that Toronto first, which, you know, without your healer, a team fight's only slowly going to end up going the other team. So Eagle uh, Slayers is just doing a, a fantastic job showing by this competition, this lockdown that they can provide so deadly. Absolutely, just get the stun. You get the follow-up stun. 
Then the drag with the umbral binding from uh, Luke on Maev. It's just nuisance. But now Spazzo, it finds itself a trashly in awkward positioning. Hill is also trying to find something, but Spazzo gets locked up again with the CC after CC stun after stun. He's still surviving because Yoli ain't giving up on him, keeping him alive. Matt now down to half health. Hill's trying to get something, but here comes Raven, gets the drag on, and Yolo will fall. That is Tarande and the one for nil as. Looks like Eagle Slayer is looking up to get the level 8 and secure in the top 10. Yeah, that, uh, what we learned from that engage is Tundra is not a finer, as she ended up getting caught really far out. They get going and they're going to get this kill on Zazo as well. Eagle Slayer is just absolutely slaying it, but they're really from Dahaka. Toronto put out, Spazzo had backed off low and just Toronto was just left. Brian Raven just got there and said, here's three more of my teammates, and uh, you can say hello. It's very well executed. Absolutely, and in fact, they're living up to the name. They're e-girl slayers. They're slaying white girl wasted. I mean, it's it's like fate predetermined at this point, as they get themselves a level advantage. Got themselves six kills to one. That's a big difference, really. Five kills already on, not even six minutes into the game. Both ta all towers are up, but when you really look at the map, you see that the middle four has taken down to below half health. There is no fountain for the tap. And now Eagle Slayers in rotation, securing the bottom giants with that siege camp. We've also got the red one on their side. That's going to apply a lot of pressure in the bottom lane. Yeah, really using that advantage by just getting, you know, there's a 10 list yet. So, you know, we tried to stop that invasion. But they just were so rotation. Their rotation was really, really nice. They rotated their room early. Caught uh, Waco wasted out just a little bit. They couldn't contend. Now they've got this with the drying camp doing some work for them in the bottom lane. Seeing if they can get any kind of more advantage for themselves. They did hit level 10. Look at the front and get him. Does jump in. Pulls himself a spazzo. He's looking to get out. He will. And this is going to potentially be a free port unless Waka of Ways to do something about it. You can see in the background, Pat is trying to kill those minions as quickly as possible. Jaina can do that, so it works out wonders. But going toward the next temple for activation phase is the bottom temple. And really, 10 to 9. I think Waka of Ways to need to catch up back in XP advantage in order to at least do something come to the next fight. at this point they don't need to rush they don't really want to they're going to be careful they don't want to too heavily because on that bottom line they don't have that you know players did a very good getting rid of that as they oh, get into they they're going to be absolutely they're going in for the fight there goes heal he's looking for the dragon blade can he get a secure kill he does onto a stump god but unfortunately spazza is the one to fall he's back up with all his souls down. He's a bit squishier now, but he's back quickly. They have the 15 second buffer to, in order to get into the right position of advantage. And there's Raven looking for another drag, but White Girl wasted. Still looking for something. Pat needs to be careful. Gets rooted. Luke gets the drag. Now he's able to walk away. No matter, he's just a glorified minion at this point. But they're still fighting nonetheless. As Paul Spazza gets dragged yet again. And the fight does not end. This is a ANZ HGC, some of my words, as Spazzo stumbles his position and he falls down. The rest of Waka West are being chased. Frazo, he falls. There goes Matt for YOLO. They're looking to get another one, but no, nah, it's just going to be two for nothing. And Eagle Slayers have slain themselves some white girl waste, wasted girls. And we'll look on the country. That was some incredible team fighting from, from both sides. I mean, they, the Cassie went down and, and the Diablo went down really to begin with. So we had the 4-on-4, four four, but then came back on... The, he came back quicker, so but he was without his soul, so a lot less helpful. And it was the 5 vs 4 Slayers, I gotta remember what they're called. Um, passage job, like, it's reminiscent of what we see with the Korean team. You know, a lot of teams, competitively, like, you lose one, you, you might you back, back off, so it's a 4 vs 5, but the Korean teams are good at knowing, okay, we lose one, we can push we can start getting those and that's very reminiscent of what ego said they even know they are that person that they cassia they still kept pushing and it offered them they got two more, more kills and they two levels ahead that talent advantage there's good structures ahead
And now you can see that they're definitely in the driver's seat. The 13 talent advantage, full, nearly two level lead in the favor of Eagle Slayer compared to what got wasted. Now the Caesar size and sizing up, trying to secure themselves another siege camp. Spado wants to get another engage. There's Shalolo with the armor reduction on towards Matt. But they're only doing something to just to scare them away. I don't think Eagle Slayers are that scared as they are able to walk up and secure the siege camp for themselves. Yeah, just continuing to advantage, like we said before, you know, they stole that camp last time with their rotation and advantage that they had, you know, they can easily just steal that again, keep the pressure on on that, that bottom lane. They're probably not going to much further, that, that, that lovely bridge of death in the bottom. But, um, you know, it just keeps the pressure and then it doesn't go waste the opportunity to get that camp to get that bottom lane pushed back out again. Oh, Spazzo needs to be careful. Matt is completely ignores him. He's looking to get himself a uh, yellow full of uh, great viewers. A big hat kill. And Matt helps his team bring up. Bring, guess what? <laughs> you wish. Boss is right, right in there looking to get up themselves quite early. A sample will activate in the bottom phase as well. What can do that when you get kills? Makes a good time to get the boss when you, you can get it pretty quickly when you are well, looking like 13. Oh, well, now they hit level 13. You got 13 to 15. You got Eagle Slayers. Very close to 16. You're gonna have another. They already have an equal talent here, so if any fight has to happen, walk away. So you need to do it now before the 16 talent here comes up. But this is where it gets difficult. Three members are sieging down towards the bottom. They also got the boss. You have Luke on Maev in the background, securing that temple, applying a lot of pressure for this keep. And they secure it and they defend. It's a do or die mission for Wipe Your Waste. Spazzo gets a stun. Avatar was already caught by Matt in order to apply that extra tankiness, extra firmness for his team. And they're going to secure this bottom, keep for themselves, and maybe walk away if they can. But Matt's like, no, nope, let's fight. Spazzo wants to, let's do it. And let's secure a kill, but Spazzo is still alive thanks to Yolo. He will fall, unfortunately, as Stump God secures that kill for his team. That's going to be the main tank down. He does not have 100 souls, though. So he will not spawn quickly. But that was a pick and success for Eagle Slayers. Yeah, and you know, they've got 17 to 14. They're going to back off a little bit now. They don't need to push their, you know, they've done a really good job. The Harker's clearing up that lane. In the top on the temple for a little bit up there, so they've, you know, they've got that. But that's pretty good, you know. Twelve minutes, they got to go there. In a really good position. Why could wait to be coming up to sixteen and eagle slayer one go? Really. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's going to be a big type for why go wasted. They're in the back foot. They lost bottom keep. They got to try and somehow survive enough to at least get back up in experience get back up in talents you see the shadow stalk popped up for the team of waka wasted heels trying to secure kill on trashly but he's gonna get stunned by matt is unable to secure that kill on trashly Bazo looking to get another engage but all the members of ego slaves are there to help him out as jayna falls that's diablo now crazy is the last one but they get stuck in the warden's cave unable to escape their fate as each players are picking them off one after the other after the other. And that's gonna be a five and zero. Five and zero in the favor of Eagle Slayers. What an incredible team fight. Just work wonders, trashly able to survive for as long as possible. Kept himself alive with the Genji engage. It was not enough. And unfortunately, Eagle Slayers are looking at pressure on that call. Have themselves double catapults. All five members are up, kills the first one, spawn, three seconds until Pat's up. Another three to Spazzo's up, but it's not going to be enough as Eagle Slays do secure themselves the first game in his best of three match. And a quite a convincing one as well at that. All members across the board, though, performed incredibly well. You can't also deny White Girl Wasted, though. They did put up a fight, just did not work out their favor. They fell behind a bit too early and unfortunately weren't able to get back into the game. It's a great first one, but there's still a best of three. There's still another match. See, Waikil Wasted are able to pick it up from there if we can.
unfortunately, it's been, we're going to go on a quick five-minute break. When we come back, though, it will be game number two in its best of three between Eagle Slayers taking on White Girl Wasted. <laughs> 